Good morning, all. Marianne, how's the beach treat? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, well, thank you, Marge. <laughs> Fog on the brain? Yeah. A lot of that going around. Yeah, I was out last night and just didn't get back in time. So, you know what? I'm going to show up and I'm going to show up live this morning. So, I figure let's hang out. Oh, not there yet. That's right. You're going tomorrow. <sighs> so, today's a mess. <laughs> oh, excuse me again. So since uh, since this is this three minutes before uh, before we start praying, it's become Orioles hour this week. Um, how about the fact we swept the Phillies? Now I know the Phillies have literally the worst bullpen through like 15, 20 games in like MLB history. Um, but uh, but hey, swept the Phils. It's good for my soul. I got too many Philly friends. Vicky, I knew you'd I knew you'd agree. <coughs> this place to give me the sneezes. So alrighty, well we're a couple minutes in, so <laughs> Yeah. We're in a running for where it Look, I don't have to I don't actually have to make the playoffs in order to, to, be a, to be happy with being part of a playoff race. And so just playing meaningful games in August and September will be, will be fun. So, so we'll have to do, a, since we can't be together, we'll have to do like an O's watch party. Pick out a good game. I said, for me, wait till John Means is pitching. Pick out a good game and we'll watch it all together virtually. So I think I know what day it is. I think it's August the 14th. Um, it is Friday morning. And, uh, and we are live, so friends, thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind welcome to being live on Friday, and thank you all for you all that are here this morning being live. And for those of you who are joining later, thank you also um, for carrying on this work throughout the day. We are at commonprayer.net, and uh, the day begins in the book on page 399 with a description of, uh, of today's feast day of Maximilian Kolbe. Um, and if you don't know anything about him, um, and he will be part of the reflection for today. Um, I highly encourage you to read this paragraph. Um, long story short, he was a Polish priest who um, for a while had established a monastery in Japan, came back to Poland, um, and was instrumental in hiding Jews during the Holocaust. Um, he was eventually arrested by the Gestapo. Um, he was imprisoned at Auschwitz, um, and there is a story that... Um, that there was one of a man, um, the Nazis were about to execute um, 10 people, and one of them, you know, started crying out, you know, I'm never going to see my wife and kids again, all that kind of stuff. Um, and Koba um, decided, uh, asked to take his place. Um, and so he did. Um, and that, that's where he ended up, that's where he ended up dying. Um, the interesting thing about his monastery in Japan is that uh, it was founded on the outskirts of Nagasaki. Um, and somehow, remarkably um, survived um, the dropping of the atomic bomb on Nagasaki. And so um, just an incredible, incredible story. Um, and, one, and I think one of the things sometimes we forget um, is that the church is not done making saints. It's one of the things that I feel we, we don't say enough. The church has not finished 
making saints. Um, you and I are classified as saints um, in, from the Word of God, um, but the church is not done creating these remarkable stories. Um, and sometimes I think we believe all of them are ancient and way back in the day. And here we have this 20th century saint um, who did remarkable things and set an incredible witness for what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And so to, to come into um, contact with these um, much more modern saints and to hear their stories, um, there is an ancient feel to them. But at the same time, um, they inspire us in our modern day to do, to do the work of God in our own place and our own time. Um, thank God that we are not called to do that work in the midst of Auschwitz. Um, but we are called to do that work in the midst of the times that we find ourselves in. And so, so, um, so that's a little bit of background on today. Um, and if you're looking for some reading, I invite you to, do, uh, to, go, down the, uh, to do, go down the Google wormhole today and, uh, and research Maximilian Kolbe. And so friends, with that little introduction in mind, let us prepare our hearts for prayer. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And together, our collect for the week of August 9th. Day by day, dear Lord, of these three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. And our antiphon. In you, O God, have we taken refuge. Let us never be put to shame. And we read today from Psalm 71, verses 4 through 8. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall, always, shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. In you, O God, have we taken refuge. Let us never be put to shame. Our first reading for this morning comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 20. And today we are reading verses 24 through 42. We continue the story of uh, David and Jonathan. So David hid himself in the field. 
When the new moon came, the king sat at the feast to eat. The king sat upon his seat, as at other times, upon the seat by the wall. Jonathan stood while Abner sat by Saul's side, but David's place was empty. Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought, something has befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. But on the second day, the day after the new moon, David's place was empty. And Saul said to his son Jonathan, why has the son of Jesse not come to the feast, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem, he said. Let me go, for our family is holding a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. So now, if I have found favor in your sight, let me get away and see my brothers. For this reason he has not come to the king's table. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. He said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives upon the earth, neither you nor your kingdom shall be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. Then Jonathan answered his father Saul, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul threw his spear at him to strike him. So Jonathan knew that it was the decision of his father to put David to death. Jonathan rose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food on the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David and because his father had disgraced him. In the morning, Jonathan went out into the field to the appointment with David, and with him was a little boy. He said to the boy, run and find the arrows that I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called after the boy and said, Is the arrow not beyond you? Jonathan called after the boy, Hurry, be quick, do not linger. So Jonathan's boy gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the boy knew nothing. Only Jonathan and David knew the arrangement. Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said to him, Go and carry them to the city. As soon as the boy had gone, David rose from beside the stone heap and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He bowed three times, and they kissed each other and wept with each other. David wept the more. Then Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, since both of us have sworn in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord shall be between me and you, and between my descendants and your descendants forever. He got up and left, and Jonathan went into the city. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from Matthew chapter 27, verses 24 through 31. And we continue in our reading of the Holy Week in crucifixion passages. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole co cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
In you, O oh God, have we taken refuge. Let us never be put to shame. And on his feast day, we read the words of Maximilian Kolbe, who had this to say. These Nazis will not kill our souls, since we prisoners certainly distinguish ourselves quite definitely from our tormentors. They will not be able to deprive us of the dignity of our Catholic belief. We will not give up. And when we die, then we die pure and peaceful, resigned to God in our hearts. I invite you to hear the defiance that is inherent in these words one more time. These Nazis will not kill our souls since we prisoners certainly distinguish ourselves quite definitely from our tormentors. They will not be able to deprive us of the dignity of our Catholic belief. We will not give up, and when we die, then we die pure and peaceful, resigned to God in our hearts. And so as we turn to our friends in prayer, um, there, are, there are no um, further additions to the prayer list. Um, I had a chance yesterday to talk to Wanda at length um, around everything going on with Abe. And, uh, you know, so they're, they're awaiting the biopsy reports um, on, you know, and trying to figure out what that path forward is going to be. Um, but she said the real emergency right now is getting this blood clot taken care of that he has. Um, and so... So we continue to pray for Abe and for Wanda. And, uh, and let me just say, um, the conversation with Wanda was so encouraging to me, um, just of such a, such a strong person. Um, and so the way that she is finding ways to get through this and to support others um, just was really inspiring. So please continue to keep uh, Wanda and Abe in your prayers. Um, and so I had that update. And then um, if you'll permit me um, very, very quickly, I usually don't add my own prayer requests, um, but just over the next couple of days might invite you to pray. Um, so we are, Jenny and I are getting ready to settle on our house over in Lineborough on Monday. Um, and so over the weekend, got a couple things left to do over there. Um, but it really is the final part of our full transition over here. And so um, just prayers for no delays, no hiccups, no nothing, um, that we can just wash our hands, so to speak. An unfortunate reference given what we read today, um, but just wash, wash our hands of that and, uh, and just be able to be fully and completely present um, over here. So we're excited about, about finally finishing up the move um, and being here permanently. And so if you could just keep, just remember that. I won't mention it this morning, but if you can remember that, um, I'd, I'd be grateful. So thank you. So friends, let us pray. Our Lord and our God, these stories that intersect for us today, the story of David and Jonathan and how Jonathan protected him from the, from the growing um, almost insanity of Saul and his obsession to kill him. We have the story of Jesus who, and the obsession of political and religious leaders who were successful in killing him. And Lord, we have the story of St. Maximilian, who also was killed because of what he believed and who he was and how he elected to conduct his life, Lord. Lord, in these stories and the way they all collide, we are reminded that there is no guarantee of an easy path in the way of Christ. There is no guarantee that the that the sin and destruction of the world will not one day find its way to our doorstep. Maybe not in the ways of death, but Lord, that we are not promised an easy, simple road. And so God, as we read these stories, we pray that we would not take despair from them, but rather, Lord, that we would be incredibly strengthened to know 
that, Lord, when trials, temptations, tribulations, Lord, the things that weigh down our souls, when they happen upon us, Lord, we are not defeated. We are not abandoned. But, Lord, rather, in those moments, we find the most powerful witness of your church emerging. Lord, the friendship of David and Jonathan, and David becoming, as he endured this, becoming the greatest king that Israel ever had. Lord, as Jesus dies at the hands of those who wanted to maintain status quo, Lord, he resurrected, and Lord, this entire thing that we call the church is a result from that. Lord, we read Maximilian, Lord, and we remember that, that Nazis, that, um, that Lord, fascism, that the desire to oppress others, Lord, will not ultimately win the day. And so when we find ourselves being weighed down, as we do in this moment, help us, Lord, not to despair, but to find strength and courage for the ways ahead. And so, Lord, that's why this prayer list that we have, Lord, Lord, we do our best to minister to these folks in offering up our prayers, Lord, but there's also a way in which this list ministers to us as we see the ways that people are weighed down, and yet they continue on with incredible courage and faith. And so, Lord, help us to do our work to support them as we are called to do, to pray for them daily and to pray for them earnestly. But, Lord, let us not be so oriented towards our own work that we forget to let them speak back to us and to remind us of your goodness and to remind us of your presence. Lord, so help us hear their witness this day. Help us to hear the words and the good news of Caroline Will and Dave Cunningham, Tom Cross, Brian Cunningham, Scott Davis, Dawn Penny, Ann Wilson and Judy Most, Chelsea Sire, Perry Lyons, Jared Brown and Dave Morschbacher, Riley Black, Jeremy Dutterer, Casey Finn, Morgan, Alan Showalter, Marge Garrett, Sandy Suit, Doris Bortner, for Maddie, for an unspoken request, Shirley Johnson, Joe Zentgraf, Bill Posey, Amber Ash and Savannah Price, Karen Anderson, for Garrett, for Drew Short, Cart Denner, Lionel Snowden, Doug and Diane Hoffman, Ronald Sheridan, the family of Trish Bradshaw, for Hayden Studi, for Jason and his family, the Bretts family, for Susan, an unspoken request battling anxiety and depression, for Carolyn Yost, Baby Lacey, Norma Boone, Rick and Missy Clark, for Abe Weller and Wanda, for Jaden Foley, for a special intention, for Amy Winstein, for the family of Taylor Barnes, and for Steve Moorhead. Lord, hear us as we pray for them, but Lord, also look upon them and be pleased with the steps that they continue to make. Lord, and remind them of your presence and your goodness. following in the way of the crucified one, we still make our prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, we know that you often answer our prayers in mysterious and stunning ways. Make us sensitive to your spirit, that we might recognize your gentle nudge. And help us cultivate lives that are always ready to respond to your call. Form us into people who are truly ready to become the change we want to see. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, 
May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Oh, excuse me. Amen indeed, my friends. So it is a, it is a joy to be with you on a Friday morning. So thank you for, uh, for letting, me, letting me join in with you all um, and for making a place for me as always. And so, uh, so be sure of my prayers for today. I pray you have a great Friday and uh, looking forward to a great weekend as well. And uh, not sure exactly what tomorrow morning's going to look like, but nevertheless, uh, we will gather in some way, shape, or form again tomorrow. And so in the meantime, peace and good, my friends.